Okay, here I'm going to go over some of Bohr's atomic structures and also look at how light is produced. So when we're looking at this Bohr's model, uh, what does it kind of describe? What does it look like? Well, it's a simplified visual representation of the atomic structure. And a lot of times it's called the planetary model because it's related to how the planets orbit the sun, uh, as we can kind of see here represented. However, when we're looking at um, the Bohr's model, we want to keep in mind that the electrons um, are thought to move in fixed orbits, each representing an energy level around the nucleus. So it's a simplified way to think about this. So where each planetary kind of orbit is, an electron would exist in that level. Um, and the, the sun would represent the nucleus. Now the Bohr's model electrons would have to exist in one energy level or another. They can't exist in between. Just like planets can't be in between the orbits, they have to be in one of those fixed orbits around the sun or the nucleus. However, this is an inaccurate representation of the planets as we see here. Uh, they don't behave quite like this, but it's a more accurate representation of how the electrons actually behave because they're not in fixed one kind of dimensional um, orbits. They are going around the nucleus in this kind of three-dimensional type of form. So taking this information and learning how is light produced, um, it has to do with these energy levels and electrons moving between them. So starting off with, here we see a nice rainbow or a nice rolling uh, mountain here. Did you ever wonder why the colors are always in this order? And it's because there's different wavelengths associated with those um, different colors. They have different wavelengths. I want you to think of light as a wave and not a line. So like curling your hair, you know, it might start out straight, but actually behaves more as a wave. Specifically, different wavelengths equal different colors. And we see here at the top, the red uh, being a longer wavelength and the lower one being the blue, a different wavelength there. This all comes back to the electromagnetic spectrum. You can see visible light being a very small portion of it, uh, but we're looking at really um, focusing in on this area, which is the reason why we have different colors because of the different wavelengths. The different and the wavelengths are measured in nanometers. Now we're looking at our energy levels. Well, absorbing energy, electrons will gain energy from heat, and this will cause them to jump up in energy level. So we see here. We're having also um, releasing energy. Energy re is released as a photon of light as it falls back down to that ground state. We see this kind of metal cooling of that energy that it gained. Now we can think of these energy levels as uh, like floors in a building. The ground floor has the least amount of energy but must be filled before we can build the second level. And the same things with those electrons. They have to work up different energy levels and as they jump and change between them they can emit energy we see as light.